If I told you this 3D scenes were in made in Blender, you would call me crazy. Our 3D B-rolls went viral and everyone just keeps asking how is it so consistent. Creators like Fern and Neo use whole teams, render farms and weeks of work just to keep every shot masked. But I found a way to get that same cinematic look without ever touching Blender. And here's the twist. Every frame you just saw was built entirely with AI. Alright, let's break it down. After months of testing models and burning thousands of credits, we built a simple 5-step framework to make AI 3D videos look cinematic fast. Alright, before we animate anything, we need to start with the foundation, the base images. But as where most people get stuck, there isn't just one way to generate them. Therefore, think of it like a fork in the road. You've got two main paths, text to image and image to image. In the text to image route, you can go two ways again. Option one is to use GPT itself to create the images directly. Option two, use GPT just to craft the perfect prompt, then feed that into a dedicated model like Nano Banana for detail and texture. Earlier, we relied completely on GPT. It handled context beautifully. But once Nano Banana dropped, everything changed. Therefore, now we mix both. GPT for structure, Nano Banana for the finish. Then there's the image to image route, which I love when you already have a visual world in your mind. Let's say you've got one composition you like. You can ask GPT to generate alternate angles or build that same shot from new perspectives. But you can push it farther. Feed it a reference image and say, recreate this but in my style. Therefore, it starts learning your visual language. Once you've built a few solid images, you can even reverse engineer them. Ask GPT, what prompt would create something like this? Therefore, now you got a reusable style prompt, a digital lookbook for your world. There are multiple ways to get there, but for this video, we will keep it simple. Alright, let's do it live. So this is the first method and this is how we got all of the videos for our channel. Again, this is method 1. I will also show you method 2 which is much more efficient and faster. But this is how we used to get it done. So this is a screen grab from the newer channel if I'm not wrong. So I get this as a reference because I really love this frame. A couple of things I wanted to change. For example, the actors in this as you can see are dark the vehicles are white and the background is black right i wanted to flip it so i just said that make an image of a fresh student because i was looking for a b-roll of a student wide angle shot sitting alone in bed refer to the other image main subject should be in red because that is something i wanted to be part of my signature i didn't want to exactly copy this style so this is what it generated again it took a couple of hit and trial to get the perfect shot for example i tried again two is to one format and this other guy should be in gray color the main subject should be in red one so this was very distinct of our style. So what I did was iteratively keep generating image in the same chat and thread, right? As you can see, it's not always very consistent. For example, from this to this, it moved from 3D look to a 2D look, right? So again, I had to, you know, work around and remove the facial expressions in here. Now, this is important. In a lot of frames, I could not exactly prompt it the way I wanted it to look. So sometimes what I did is grabbed actual images and I asked it to give a similar sort of a composition, but using the style that we use so as you can see it give a style like this then we got a couple of really really nice frames like this so what i did is i kept generating like this and then slowly and steadily we started creating a lookbook so this is the lookbook that we generated as you can see it consists of all the images that was like perfectly tuned to what we were looking for so after we had a lookbook that we really loved like this we went to chat gpt so after giving it all the images to study so i gave it a prompt like this understand the style and the composition and give me a structure and detail prompt for chat gpt now you can replace this with also nano banana but uh, yeah so this is what i gave and this is like a sort of a structured prompt you can be good with only this but to even enforce the model to be specific we can give it something like this i will give you this in the description down below next what we have to do is copy this prompt and save it in a good place and go to a new chat window and first i would dictate the scenario that i want to generate point of view shot of someone who is held hostage by criminal the criminal has a gun rewrite the above scene in the format of the below prompt do not change the necessary details i will give it this i can always copy this and go to the next part where i can either use gpt to generate this image or even move to nano banana so it has generated a detailed prompt but i wanted to show you something that even with such a bad and minimum prompting i mean this is a very vague prompt i haven't said anything about the sort of perspective are there more people is it in a room is it in a jail i will show you the power of this sort of prompting approach it will still generate really great images so you can either use gemini to generate the image you can simply 
paste this and also share image as a reference. But we generally use Higgsfield AI to have access to Nano Banana. So I will just paste this prompt that we generated and click on unlimited and 16 by 9 ratio. First, we will try to see what happens if we don't give it a reference image. Then we will give it a reference image from our lookbook. So we will try to give it an image where we have two characters because one is gray and one is red, right? Now, Nano Banana usually is very restrictive when you give it a reference image. So it tries not to change the reference image a lot. So we might have to use some other model too. So I will also try a different model called Sea Dream. For a lot of more creative shots, Sea Dream has performed better than Nano Banana. So I will click on Unlimited and I will give it the same prompt. So as you can see, Nano Banana has given a pretty interesting image right here with very high consistency of the sort of style we look for. Now this was without the reference image. Now this shows that the prompting that we did is a very structured prompt. As you can see, again, with the reference image also, it did a pretty nice job, Nano Banana. But if you see the Seed Dreams result, I like it even more. So a lot of creative shots we use actually Seed Dream. As you can see, it's so good. But before that, there's one thing that keeps this whole workflow running smoothly. Now, everyone talks about models, prompts and plugins. But if your network sucks, your Hollywood quality pipeline immediately collapses. Slow downloads, geologs, captures, broken logins, they kill creativity. That's why I run my AI workflow through floppy data. The proxy service that quietly handles speed, stability and geo. So I can focus on making shots look cinematic. These are their core features. Faster setup and updates. Data center proxies for large models, checkpoints, LUTs and SFX faster with stable routes instead of throttle mirrors. Second, stable AI logins. Static residential routes keep MFA, billing and long render smooth without random IP drops. Geo testing. 195 plus locations with city level targeting help me preview visuals and platforms across regions. Research at scale. Rotating residential or mobile proxies let me browse references freely with a fewer captures. Team ready. Editors, motion designers and prompt artists can work under one dashboard with go login profiles, isolated and secure. And the best part? Prices just drop. Data center options start from $0.6. Residential slash mobile options start from $1 per gigabyte. Smooth workflow, stable tools. That's floppy data for you, right? Something else I wanted to show you is, for example, I might not like the angle so i can actually download this image and then choose a model called flux context max now flux context is really good because it tries to keep the composition and style without you even mentioning it so we will remove this prompt but we would upload the image so instead of this i would type probably like a top angle birds i pov shot and let's just see what it does i will change the aspect ratio to 16 by 9 give it unlimited so as you can see flux context has generated a top angle shot even this is not perfect and because a little bit of working around. So while we are making this video, Higgsfield just announced Higgsfield angles. Now, if I click on this, what you can do is simply just upload this image and right, just reset all of this. Yeah. So what we're, we would do is probably rotate the image. So as you can see, using the angles feature, we use 30 degrees and we didn't change the vertical angle. So it has given us an image like this. Now, there are some inconsistencies. Why I'm doing the another angle? Because this will help us with the end frames part when we animate this. Now this was the approach one. So the second method is using something called a custom GPT. So this GPT is specifically trained for creating cinematic 3D B-roll videos. So I will give it a reference image and then just simply send the image. Basically it will give a prompt to generate a scenario or a composition just like this. So this is what it gave and the best thing is it even gives us multiple angle shots like for B-rolls that we use right. For example this is a side standoff sort of an angle. Another is a close barrel shot angle. Another is a reverse POV angle. Everyone's chasing prompts and models, but composition is what takes you from a novice prompt engineer to an AI filmmaker. If you want to go deeper, Studio Binder has a great free breakdown on framing and shot types. I will link it in the description down below. After copying the prompt, we will again go to Nano Banana. First, we will try without giving any reference image. Next, we would give it a reference image. <laughs> by the way, this video is not sponsored by Higgsfield in any capacity. So as you can see, the first image that it generated has sort of a liquid 8K highly rendered octane engine rendered texture in this it lost the sort of red vibe that we typically use but this is simply because this is a custom prompt made by this specific person and uh, this second method is really more useful when you don't have a style on your mind and you want to start from scratch again when we gave it a reference image it tried to preserve a lot of the details from the reference image that we gave but again as you can see this part is not supposed to be there the best one which is more consistent is probably the one with without any sort of reference image. So understanding the sequence of things that you do is very important when you are using an AI workflow. It's totally up to you. You can pick either method. Method one takes a little bit longer and works really well if you have a particular style that you 
already have on your mind you want to go forward with that and when you kind of create a lookbook after multiple iterations second method is for someone who is just starting out and want to create ai b roles and doesn't know much all right let's move to the next part video generation now, the simplest way to turn your images into motion is through ai video models there are many out there but the two that consistently give me the best cinematic results are vo 3.1 and cling 2.5 turbo vo is easy to access under a student plan you get monthly credits for free we will use flow for accessing vo and hixfield ai for cling so for generating the videos there are again multiple approaches but this is the easiest one again we will go to this custom gpt we'll upload the image and then it will ask us if we would love to have an image for this we'll click on the scene so it will ask for the ratio as you can see it has actually given a pretty good image for the scenario although we are not going to use this you can simply type video prompt for the main scene so we will copy this prompt and we will use vo3 using flow so we will use frames to video and uh, upload our image let's restrict it to only one output per prompt landscape and we would use vo3.1 fast quality uses a lot of credit so i think for initial rounds when you're not exactly sure if this is the right prompt or not because there might be few iterations it's better to use vo3.1 fast once you're happy with the result then maybe you can use quality but from our testing we have found that 3.1 fast is pretty good so as you can see we have the first frame and previously i told you that we can also generate end frames by changing the angles as we have shown before and with that we can also give the end frame in here but let's for now just giving the first frame does with vo3 we would give the same prompt and the image reference to cling using the hixfield platform and we would choose cling to point five turbo for initial tests let's restrict it to just five seconds and resolution to 720p only ensure that enhance on is turned on first let's see what vo3 has generated then let's see what cling has generated But as you can see, there's absolutely no camera motion in this. The way we can improve this is change the prompt and probably just replace from static camera to revolving camera, and then we would get a revolving shot. If you already like this shot, then you can simply just download this as original size or upscale to 1080p. We would go for original size for now. But here's the part nobody talks about: camera movement. Most people just hit generate and hope their motion to turn out great. But knowing what you are asking for completely changes the result. There's the push-in shot: slow move forward for intensity. Then the dolly out, pulling back to reveal scale. Then the arc shot, circling the subject for extra drama. Now these moves are what makes AI shot feel cinematic instead of just random movements. If you want a deeper breakdown, Studio Binder has an amazing guide on every shot type. But if you just want quick results, Hixfield already has camera movement templates built in. Just pick one, and you're pretty much good to go. And if you love this kind of stuff, we are building something special: a community of AI-ready editors and creators. Mastering these tools together, we are already 10,000 members strong, sharing workflows, breakdowns, and the kind of Inside the tricks every editor will need to know in 2026. You can scan the QR code on the screen right now to join. It's completely free, but not for very long. All right, the visuals and motions are done. Now for the audio, the easiest way is to use Eleven Labs. Type your script, choose a voice, or clone your own. Done. You can even use Eleven Labs to generate background music. The next is a bonus section: upscaling. We use Topaz Video AI for that. It sharpens details, boosts depth, and makes your AI video look like a real film. Totally optional, but absolutely worth it if you plan to watch it in a very big screen. So yeah, that's the full pipeline. We have given you all the secrets that we use to get such quality results. And if you want to know how we create viral AI ads, you can watch this video. Touchdown, buzzer beat to do it all now. All now, top.